So um, welcome, as I mentioned, to today's webinar. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Uh, my name is Jenna and I'm with Emerging Destinations. We represent cool companies in cool places. Uh, today, I'm being joined by Judy Hurst, who you can see up there on your screen. She is working alongside Emerging Destinations in the promotion of Iceland Pro Travel and Iceland Pro Cruises um, in the North American market. So, um, as you know, today we are talking about Iceland. Uh, more specifically, uh, Judy is going to take us into um, more about the, um, the geothermal pools in Iceland in the southern part of the island. So, um, before we get started with that, and I hand things over to her though, I will take a quick minute to introduce our portfolio. So, as I mentioned, um, we, today we are talking about Iceland. So, um, I will introduce to you Iceland Pro Cruises, which is our sister company, and they offer circumnavigations around Iceland. In addition to, we also have one itinerary that includes Greenland as well. Um, secondly, we have Iceland Pro Travel, which is who we will be speaking about today. Uh, they are the DMC partner uh, for Iceland Pro Cruises, so we can handle anything on the ground that your clients would like, um, start to finish. We are your one-stop Iceland shop. And then we also have Hotel Island, which is underneath our portfolio. And they are a hotel located in Reykjavik. And last but not least, uh, to switch things up a little bit, we also have Pax More Greece. So they offer DMC services in Greece for all of your off the beaten path luxury uh, Greece needs. Please uh, don't hesitate to reach out. As well as you can see, there is a number of other uh, clients on your screen that I have not introduced. So we have an extensive Africa and South America, Central America uh, portfolio. So if there's anything on your screen that you see is of interest to you, please feel free to reach out to me. My email address is um, on your screen there, Jenna at EmergingDestinations.com. And I'm more than happy to go through any of those with you. Um, in addition, we'd also like to offer um, our services if you would like any training for you and your team um, on Iceland so you can contact us about that too um, and then just a couple of housekeeping items to go over before I officially pass things on to Judy uh, so this webinar will be recorded so if there's any reason that you get caught up for a minute or have to take a call uh, we will be sending the recording out in our webinar follow-up which I will get to you later this week so if there's anything that you missed or you need to step out early um, we will be recording this, so you don't have to worry about missing any of Judy's um, expertise. Um, and then also at the end, we will be doing a live Q&A with Judy and I here. So if there's any questions that you have that come up throughout her presentation or any comments, um, please use the GoToWebinar control panel to type those through. And we will try to get to as many of those as possible at the end of the webinar. As always, if there's a question we don't get to, we, uh, we will make sure that you get the answer in the webinar follow-up or we will reach out to you personally. So I think that is all that I have to say today. So Judy, I will um, hand things over to you. Thank you so much, Jenna. I am so happy to be here once again, talking to you about my personal passion, Iceland. In case you have been with us before, you've heard all about the Iceland 101, the map and all the other uh, pertinent information. So I'm really foregoing that this time around. And we're just going to really jump into the geothermal spas in the southern part of the island. I have a question uh, that I would like, I'm just curious if you just write in your comment. I'm curious to know how many of our listeners today have actually been to Iceland? Um, I know a lot of people want to go there. It's on their list and they haven't been. I'm just curious how many of you have actually been there as well as sold Iceland. We want to help you make it a little bit easier to sell Iceland and that's why we're doing these fabulous webinars. So I've been going for 15 years and each time I go it's my favorite trip because it just gets better and better every time I go to Iceland. Just wanted to put this up in the beginning in case I know you're going to be taking notes. Jenna's um, email is up at the top and mine is also up there, as well as my website, my phone number. So remember, we're talking about Iceland Pro Travel, which is the DMC partner, and Iceland Pro Cruises, which is the wonderful circumnavigation uh, cruises that we offer around Iceland and also on to Greenland. So today, what we're going to do, what we find that with Iceland, two of the, the most frequently asked questions when people want to go to Iceland, when am I going to see the Northern Lights? When do I go to Iceland to see the Northern Lights? 
And then now it's like, well, do I what, do I go to the Blue Lagoon or do I go to the Sky Lagoon because I don't know the difference? That's what we want to tackle. So let me answer that first question about the Northern Lights. My normal answer, all these years, it has been October to March is when you will have the best opportunity to see the Northern Lights. Remember, it's not a guarantee. We don't know when or where they will appear. However, I will tell you that this year, they started in mid-August and they have been absolutely spectacular. So I have to change it and say maybe September to March. At any rate, they're uh, something that you really do want to see. The second question is the Sky Lagoon or the Blue Lagoon. Everyone has heard about the Blue Lagoon. Few people have heard about the Sky Lagoon and that's where the questions come up is, well, what is the difference? Which one should I go to? So that's what we wanna to tackle today. Now, Iceland itself is geothermal energy all over the complete island. There are over 45 natural hot springs and more than 200 swimming pools. Every town, nook and cranny, every place that you can go to in Iceland, there is a swimming pool. The locals refer to these as the swimming pools, not just the geothermal spas. So here uh, is just a, a shot of the entry there. It looks quite similar, doesn't it? The Sky Lagoon and the Blue Lagoon. However, we're now gonna delve a little bit deeper and show you the differences. The Blue Lagoon is definitely one of Iceland's most popular attractions. It is located really closer to the airport than it is to Reykjavik. So Blue Lagoon is about 20 minutes from the airport, 50 minutes from downtown. Most visitors uh, choose to do the Blue Lagoon either when they arrive in Iceland, you can get a bus right from the airport that will take you to the Blue Lagoon. There are lockers there where you can store your luggage. Other people end up doing it on the way going home just before they check in at the airport. They would uh, go to the Blue Lagoon and spend some time there. There are two different packages, the comfort package, the premium package. You can see the difference. It's, it's not terribly different, but $61 versus $80. Of course, these things are all subject to change. But basically what you see here, it's your entrance. You do get a silica mud mask. Both packages give you a towel. Both packages give you a drink of your choice, alcoholic or not. If you take the premium package, you get a few more little goodies. You get a bathrobe, you get a second choice of a face mask, you get slippers, and you can also get a reservation at the Lava restaurant, which is absolutely wonderful. Both packages permit you to use the sauna and the steam rooms. And please note that children are permitted in the Blue Lagoon. Between the ages of two and 13, children are complimentary. Pre-booking is absolutely required now. It didn't used to be, but uh, things have gotten really, really popular in Iceland. And so they have had to do a timed entry. Once you're in, you can stay as long as you wish, but you do have to make a reservation for an entry time. And working with Iceland Pro Travel as your DMC company, we can make those arrangements for you and put that into the package of the, the land package that we create for you. Upon arrival, you're given a wristband, and this is for use for all of your purchases as well as using the lockers. It will open and it will close the lockers so you can see this. Um, changing facilities are pretty much open. Of course, there are separate rooms for men and women, but it's pretty much an open situation. There are a few stalls where if you want privacy, you can do it. But this is probably the most important thing that I have to tell you about the uh, geothermal spas in Iceland and probably the thing that raises a little bit of apprehension on the uh, Americans. Um, this is not a suggestion. It is the law. You must shower before going into the geothermal spas and you really are supposed to do it without your bathing suit. There are 
stalls that are private. There's also open stalls. If, you, if you're not worried by it, you can just shower there. And then after you get done showering, there's soap, there's shampoo, there's conditioners. This is where I need to tell you, while there is shampoo and conditioners, I am saying to you, do not wet your hair, do not wash your hair, do not put conditioner in your hair. Do not get your hair wet at any time when you're in the Blue Lagoon. You will regret it. Um, the minerals and the silica that's in the water, you will, I'm telling you, your hair, you won't recognize it. You will have a real challenge for a good week or so if you get your hair wet trying to get all of the chemicals out of your hair. So really keep your head above water. But you do have to shower, then wrap yourself in your towel, and you're going to head on out to the Blue Lagoon itself. You'll have your towel around you and then you, you there are places where you hang up your towel and you'll use it you know later on and you'll have flip-flops usually with you what um sorry about this i just drew an absolute blank by all means take your camera but make sure that you have a, a, a plastic bag a waterproof bag some kind of a case for your camera because you're definitely going to want to take pictures when you look at the Blue Lagoon here, the size of it is approximately the size of two football fields. And there is even a walking trail around the perimeter. It's about a mile or so long, and it's mostly flat that if you want to, you can walk around, you can jog around it. You can see how absolutely beautiful it is, and of course, the color of the water. However, I have to tell you, the Blue Lagoon is not natural. It is man made. If you look in the upper left picture, what you're seeing there is a geothermal plant. And when the Blue Lagoon was created, which is really quite a long time ago, um, it was really done to use the overflow from the waters that are cleaned and all through the geothermal energy. So it is technically, it is a man-made facility. All of the algae, and the silica in the waters. It was originally opened for people who have skin conditions. If you have any kind of a skin condition, you, you just won't believe how therapeutic going to the Blue Lagoon will be. As you can see, it's all really wide open. There is a timed entry. However, once inside, you can stay as long as you want. Plenty of space to walk around, move around. Temperature is between 98 and 104 degrees Fahrenheit. And this is really one of the fun parts. Um, you'll see all around the perimeter of the Blue Lagoon, there are boxes. And what you do is where that white, the, the white stuff on their faces is silica. And in these big bins, there are what just tons of white silica. You put your hand in and you put that all over your face. It's an exfoliant, it's a natural exfoliant, and you leave that on for about 15 or 20 minutes and splash it off. It is extraordinary, the, the therapeutic properties, and I'm telling you, I swear all your wrinkles disappear. It's just a marvelous, marvelous thing. As far as the depth of the water, it's only about four and a half feet deep, but this is something that you definitely do. See, those girls don't have their hair wet. They're smart, keep their hair out of the water. There is also a swim up bar because one drink is included in your entry fee and it can be alcohol or not, but it is included uh, with your entry fee. So you've got the swim up bar. There are two restaurants. There is the Lava restaurant, which is fine dining. It is rather expensive, but the food is really extraordinary. And look at the view. And the whole time you're sitting in your bathing suit or with your bathrobe on, but it is absolutely wonderful. If fine dining is not for you there is the cafe which is much more casual dining and less expensive food but either way the food is really great and of course this is the must do you have to, you have to go to the gift shop only cautionary tale i'm going to tell you is whatever you buy in the gift shop pay attention to the size of the bottle because if you're not going to put it in your checked luggage and you're going to put it in your carry-on luggage, you may be in for a very sad story if they take it away from you, which is what happened to me. I spent a fortune on these things, really expensive. And then TSA, when you're going through, 
the piece that they were larger than three ounces. So please be aware of that. You don't want to lose that. Really, really good stuff. I will tell you, you will love it. And um, in most cases, you have to buy it in Iceland. At the Blue Lagoon, they have opened a hotel. It is called The Retreat at the Blue Lagoon. It's 62 suites. And this opened actually just in April of 2018. It's fairly pricey. They have a beautiful restaurant. It's called the Moss Restaurant. Absolutely beautiful restaurant there. Again, as you can see, fine dining, exquisite cuisine. And this is this is more of the beautiful food. I can't help it. I'm a foodie. I take a lot of food pictures. The food is absolutely great. There is a second hotel that they built at the Blue Lagoon called the Silica. It's a little bit less expensive and it's 35 rooms. This opened in March of last year, 2021. So it is very new. Guests staying at both the Silica and the Retreat have separate entries and actually a separate private part of the Blue Lagoon that is accessible only to guests of the hotel. So that's another thing that you might want to keep in mind. Beautiful rooms, beautiful location. However, the Blue Lagoon is very isolated. There's not much around there. If your clients are coming in, maybe they want it for the first night or the last night, but you're not going to go into Reykjavik. You're a good hour away from Reykjavik. So keep that thought in mind. So that's what I really want to tell you about the Blue Lagoon. Now we're going to go and check out the Sky Lagoon, which is the new one. Very different entryway. If you're driving from Reykjavik, parking is free. And this is only 15 minutes from Reykjavik. This is an aerial view. It's a little bit hard to tell um, from here, but you have when you're at the Sky Lagoon, it's much smaller than the Blue Lagoon and it sits right on the waterfront. So you have views of the fjords and the glaciers. It's a very calming atmosphere. So you can see what the, the view is like and you have this um, illusion pool where you look over into the ocean. I, I think this is an absolutely stunning, stunning spot and the views are spectacular. So the difference here is that there is a seven step ritual that you go through. Yes, you pay your an entry fee into to the lagoon, but you're also going th to go through each of these seven steps, which I'm going to explain in just a moment. But I just want to show you. Here there are two packages, the pure package and the sky package. There are separate changing rooms. This is newer, so I think it looks a little bit prettier. And as you can see, important, there are private shower stalls, but you still will be showering. Here are the pricing. The Sky Pass, which is the more expensive, is the 109. And that's where you're going to have a private shower and, and hair dryer. That's the view that you can see on the left. The Pure Pass is a little bit less expensive. It's $78. And you're still getting your towels and your private changing rooms and a locker. And here at the Sky Lagoon, and this is going to appeal to some people, there are no children permitted. No children under 12. So again, that adds to the different ambiance that you have here. And after you've had your shower, this is now the uh, what it looks like to go into. So there are a lot of these are handicap accessible if that question comes up. This one definitely is handicap accessible to get into the Sky Lagoon as well as the Blue Lagoon. So we can take care of those arrangements for you as well. So step one, you basically enter at your own pace and you can see here what's totally different. It's very intimate. It's a little bit more nooks and cranny. Water temperature here is about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And this is where you first enter and you can stay in this spot as long as you want. This is step one. Now we move on to step two, which is a cold plunge. Outside the air is cold. And the water is going to be really cold. They're suggesting only 10 to 30 seconds. Then you move on to step three. Now you're going to warm up a little bit. Look at the location of this sauna. Isn't this spectacular? 
And it seems odd that it's totally open like that and you're still getting the benefits of the sauna, but it's absolutely spectacular. You're only gonna be here for five or 10 minutes. Of course, stay a little bit longer, but I wouldn't suggest staying longer than 15 minutes here in the sauna. From the sauna, you go into step four, which is the cold mist shower. So you were cold, you went into the sauna, now you're cooling down before you go to step five, which is a, you give yourself, no one's there to do it for you, you're doing it yourself. Now, you have a body scrub, so you have almond oil, sesame oil, grape oils, wonderful body scrub, so you're cleaning yourself off now and you know exfoliating, it's absolutely great. Then you go into the steam room where it melts the salt from the scrub. Stay there, I would say, again, this is not for the duration. I mean, you're gonna go in here for maybe 10 minutes or so, and then now you go into a shower facility and you're now gonna really wash off the scrub and then go back and spend more time in the lagoon itself. Of course, there's a gift shop, and of course, there's the opportunity to spend some money and buy some wonderful purchases. There is a restaurant here, just one restaurant. Yes, there is a swim up bar, but the restaurant here, it's more casual uh, pub type food. Really, really good. But it's, as you can see, it's a totally different uh, atmosphere and ambiance than the Blue Lagoon. This are some more shots of different spaces in the Sky Lagoon. It certainly is not as crowded. It's a fabulous thing to think about going to either the Blue Lagoon or the Sky Lagoon in the evening and watch for the Northern Lights. It may be snowing, you're in the warm water, it may be snowing and then you see the Northern Lights. Absolutely incredible experience. And of course you get to see some beautiful, beautiful sunsets. Both spas are wonderful. Blue Lagoon is on the left, Sky Lagoon on the right. Um, if you have to choose one, it might be a little bit difficult. Why not do both? It's absolutely doable if you're spending five to seven, 10 days in Iceland. What I wanna do is, that, that was the, the bulk of what I wanted to show you the difference, but I wanna show you a few other options in the southern part of the island. And this is Fontana Spa. I've got all the pertinent information, the, the entry fees and all here, but this is another beautiful, lovely, spa that you can go to and this is very close to Reykjavik it's a, it's about um oh maybe 45 minutes or so from Reykjavik they have beautiful finished style sauna they have steam rooms and cold pools to enjoy this is something that you can only do at Fontana so with the geothermal energy you can take a bakery tour and what they do is they make this incredible bread they put it in a bucket they dig the hole and they bury it in the ground and it is actually baked with the heat from the geothermal energy it is phenomenal bread it's very it's dense it's um very molasses in taste really dense they have a lovely restaurant this is more casual dining soup is very big soup is very very popular in iceland soup and this bread and my very very favorite down in the lower right hand corner it sounds odd it's rye bread ice cream which is out of this world so they take this bread they dry it they make bread crumbs out of it they make a vanilla ice cream base and they mix in the bread crumbs for texture absolutely wonderful wonderful treat i've never had it anywhere but iceland the bakery tour is separate and that is about 18 dollars a person children are permitted here definitely secret lagoon this is another wonderful place this is actually the oldest swimming pool in iceland it was built in 1891 very natural surroundings it's close to a geyser which sprouts every few minutes so that's another added attraction there are private lockers but no private showers i mean these i think are, are just extra wonderful values for only twenty dollars they only have one pool 
So you're not going to have all the other amenities. You're not going to have the gift shop. You're not going to have a great restaurant. You're going to have a bar, but it's not a swim up bar. So it just depends on the atmosphere. This is really a very uh, more local than tourist, I'll say. Blue Lagoon and Sky Lagoon are really geared for the tourist trade. This is more for the locals and absolutely wonderful. The other one, the last one that I want to tell you about or mention is Chroma. And this is this is a natural geothermal spa and bath, and it's absolutely gorgeous. This is about 60 miles from outside of Reykjavik, and this is along the Golden Circle route that most tourists end up taking. You can see it's lovely changing facilities, lockers. Chroma is different in that it offers five geothermal pools, a cold pool, two saunas, and a steam room, and a wonderful relaxation room with the fireplace. They do have a lovely restaurant, more casual than fine dining. You can see the atmosphere, you can see uh, all the geothermal energy. These spas are just a wonderful, wonderful treat for people going to Iceland. I don't care which one you go to, go to the mall if you can. It's just something that you have to do when you go to Iceland. So what we've done this time around, we've focused on the southern part of the island. And what I'm planning on doing on my next webinar are the geothermal spas in the north. Because if you have more time, I really recommend that you visit the northern part of Iceland, not just the southern part. They're both spectacular so much to see and do. So once again, I'm curious to know how many of you have actually been to Iceland, because I'm going to assume you all want to go to Iceland. I'd love to think that you've sold it. And please make sure that you reach out to us, Jenna or myself at Iceland Pro Travel, Iceland Pro Cruises. Iceland is our passion. Uh, we want to share it with you. We want you to know what it's all about and how great it is. I'm just gonna put up one more contact and I'm being very selfish about this, but on my Facebook page, which is JDH Associates, I post daily trivia facts and information on Iceland, more things to see and do. So you might wanna keep that in mind, but we hope that you've enjoyed this. Um, I'm surprised that I got it done in 25 minutes because I can keep going and talking and talking about Iceland. But I want you to understand the difference in the spas. And I hope to see you back here next time. So now we're going to open it up for questions. Jenna, are you there? I am. I'm here. So I did just want to give you the stats that I had from the beginning um, when you had asked for those that were already in attendance who has been to Iceland. Um, so at that time, I know we're getting some more answers in here now, but at the beginning when you asked, it was 12 people had been to Iceland, two are going to be going within the next year, and then there was only four that had not out of the ones that had answered. So that's pretty good numbers. Oh, right. And as, as, you, um, as you thought, there are quite a few questions. So let me um, get started with the first one here okay. that I can find. Um, okay, so this is in relation to um, the Blue Lagoon. Uh, there used to be another option, the VIP service, where you get a separate entrance. Is that still available? It is. They, they keep, um, you know, uh, supply and demand, I guess you could say, but they do keep adding different options. The two that I posted on the screen are the most common ones, but there is, for people who want the ultimate in luxury, basically it's like a hotel room that is the most expensive i can't recall i don't i'm not sure what the price is presently but it is technically you're checking into a hotel room not at their hotels but in the blue lagoon itself facility and so you have private facility you have a bathroom uh you have a changing room you know and you have it to yourself and you're that's yours for the whole time that you're there i i want to uh, no, I'm not going to even name a price because I'm sure it has changed. But yes, there is there are other options. And also at the Blue Lagoon, you can pre-book spa treatments and they do it right in the water. They do facials, they do massages right in the water. So that's another thing that you can do at the Blue Lagoon. Fantastic. Okay, so let's try to find the next one here for you. Um, is there 
Uh, oh, you actually answered this. So it, the question was, is there an age minimum for the Sky Lagoon? But you had answered it in the next slide. So I will just say that, um, yes, there's an age limit. It's only ages 12 and up for the right. Sky Lagoon. Um, a question for you, Judy. Does the Sky Lagoon also require advanced reservations? Yes. I, I won't say require. I'm going to say recommends. Okay. As as you all know, I, I hope you all know, Iceland just keeps getting more and more popular every year. It's a tiny country. I mean, it, 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 there's 360,000 people in the whole country. You know, I, I and you've got one million or more tourists coming every year. And these are the places that the tourists insist on going, the Blue Lagoon, and of course the Sky Lagoon being newer, everybody wants to check it out. Yes, I really do recommend making a reservation. And again, these are timed entry. Once you're in there, you can right. stay if you wish. Okay, fantastic. So another one for the Sky Lagoon. I know you had mentioned that the Blue Lagoon is man-made. Is the Sky Lagoon natural or man-made? I'm gonna get myself in trouble here. Um, <laughs> why did I not know that? I, you know what? I don't recall you mentioning it, but maybe you did and I missed it, which is always possible, but... I don't want to go out on a limb here, and I don't want to give you wrong information. So I'm just going to look through my notes here for one second and see if I happen to mention, if I wrote it down but didn't mention it. I'm going to say to you... That I need to get back with an answer yeah, on that. I was I was just about to say we can definitely make sure yeah. that that's answered in the webinar follow up. Definitely. Perfect. I'm sorry, there's quite a few more um, questions okay. coming in, so I'm just trying to figure out where we were at the last one. Um, do you know, Judy? Um, are do they accept uh, both payments in cash and card at both the Sky and Blue Lagoon? You know what's interesting about Iceland. Um, I belong personally to about 15 different Iceland Facebook groups, and I'm reading constantly 15,000. I, I can't tell you how many posts a day of people, tourists that, that go to Iceland. And the subject comes up all the time about money. What is very interesting is that they will say to you, you need no currency of any kind in Iceland. It is a credit card society. Tipping is not the norm. So you don't, I mean, you can, sometimes it's outright refused. So there's not much need for cash. Basically credit cards are used for everything. They do take cash, don't get me wrong. You can use cash, you can use Euro or US dollars or Icelandic Krona, which is their currency. But it's not even necessary, truly. People manage to go there for a week and not take any cash money at all. The great question who, uh, for um, on that one. Um, okay, another question, Judy. I know you answered this, but perhaps somebody came in a little late, sure. and so I'm going to ask it again because I think it's a good one. Um, mm -hmm. Should you not get your hair wet at any of the spas um, that you talked about today? It's the Blue Lagoon where the problem is. The okay. others are fine. You can get your hair wet. The Blue Lagoon, because of this silica that's in the water and the different minerals, even though they provide you with shower and conditioner. So I, I don't know what these chemicals do to your hair, and gosh, if, if you have color-treated hair, it's an absolute unequivocal, do not get your hair wet. But something about after, even without color-treated hair, you get your hair wet and you go in and you, sh you, know, you shower again at the end and you shampoo and condition, you're gonna use almost a, a whole, bottle of conditioner and it's going to feel good until your hair and there are hair dryers there so and hair brushes and you you've got your stuff there that you that you can use but i'm telling you your hair is it's going to be horrible it, it's just you're not going to be happy it better not to get your hair wet that that's that's the best answer i can give you don't get your hair wet perfect so uh -huh. another one this kind of goes in line with what you're already saying um and you might have already touched on a little bit of this, but I'll ask anyways, just to clarify. At the Sky Lagoon, are the minerals still as healthy as a Blue Lagoon, as in no. uh, the facials, et cetera, that you can do? It's really not the same thing. The okay. Sky Lagoon is not touting any wellness 
or skin um, improvement in that. It's the Blue Lagoon that has that. That's again, one differentiation is the Blue Lagoon, if you have any skin condition, um, definitely the Blue Lagoon will, I, I happen to be one of those people and it's just amazing just utterly amazing. And that's why they actually built that hotel was because people wanted to stay there so they could you know, use it for wellness. So that's how the, the Silica Hotel and the retreat at the Blue Lagoon came about. It was actually for people who wanted to uh, do a wellness program and stay there for several days. Sorry, I just kind of <laughs> I I blanked out on you there for one second. We just we have so many questions coming in. I do it constant. So the that but so the Blue Lagoon is the only one that is that has really those properties. The others do not. There okay. are many, but it's not the same. Perfect. Okay, so um, I know we we have quite a few questions coming in, and I don't think we'll get to answer them all just because we want to keep um, this timely today. So. Please be rest assured that we will be sending you out all the answers to the questions if we don't answer them right now. So I'll just try to filter through a couple more here for you, Judy. So okay. how much time should be planned for a visit to the Blue Lagoon prior going to the airport? Okay, I would say at the Blue Lagoon itself, if you're going, especially if you're gonna eat there, you're gonna be there for two, two and a half hours. If you're not going to eat, in all honesty, and being very honest with you, if you're with a group of people, it's a lot of fun. If it's just one or two people, an hour is really sufficient. You're just going to add more time if you're going to eat there. Right. Okay. And remember, you, you have to get to the airport, you know, several hours early. And there is a bus. The bus for the Blue Lagoon, you can get a bus from the airport to the Blue Lagoon, as well as from the Blue Lagoon back to the airport. Okay, and I will try to, well, we're still getting a ton of questions, but I'm gonna have to cut it off because they're all really good yeah. questions, so. Um, we, will answer, we will answer all of your questions, really we will. Exactly, so um, what are, and I think you mentioned this, but what are the working hours or the open hours, I should say, of both of the lagoons? And is that all year round? All of them are open year round. The um, Blue Lagoon, and this has been fluctuating a bit because the flights, remember the flights get into Iceland, generally speaking, from the States anyway, the flights arrive at six or so in the morning. So, Yes, you can, suggestion, go to the duty-free shop, do some shopping, um, get a bite to eat. The Blue Lagoon doesn't open until, and it fluctuates between 9 and 10 a.m., depending on the time of the year. Uh, same with the Sky Lagoon, you're looking at pretty much a 9 or 10 o'clock opening time. They both stay open until about 10 or 11 at night. Perfect. So that's why you had mentioned that you might be able to catch the, um, it's the so northern cool. lights. So cool. If you're going in the winter and you're you're in either of them and it starts snowing, you're in warm water and it's, you know, you're outside and it's snowing and then all of a sudden the northern lights appear. I don't know. I don't know how it could get any better than that, truthfully. No, that sounds super magical. So everybody keep that in mind. If you have clients going um, to Iceland in the winter months, which is the same as our winter months, then a uh, trip to Either either of these or both of these really um, would be a must do uh, for that time of year. So just just on the time frame that we're at right now, I do want to close off the questions. I will say that we do have the entire presentation recorded. We had a few people who missed the first um, few minutes. So please um, be aware that we will be sending the full recording out to you later this week. And we will be answering any questions that we didn't get to today. If they are something that um, is urgent, please feel free to email Judy. Her email address is up there on the screen or myself at jenna at emergingdestinations.com. If you have anything that you'd like to ask us before we um, send out the official uh, webinar recording or follow-up but 
Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to join us. It seems like this was a very good topic. So as Judy mentioned, we will be doing a second part to this webinar um, series or two part series, um, talking about the uh, geothermal pools in the northern part of Iceland. So we will have that uh, those dates out to you soon. And we hope that you're able to join us then as well. Thank you so much, everyone. Look forward to next time. Thank you. Take care. Bye.